I mean, it's been a minute, so of course my mic won't work. Of course it has to be scruff. I don't know how I look, but here I am. Oh God, I am big. Jeez, let me, let me make myself slower. Hello, hi, it's been a minute. Hello everyone, and for those who do not know me, my name is Tito from The Block, and I am back from my business trip to Kansas City. And the best thing I could say about that is I got first class ticket over there. It was very relaxing. I've never been on a first class flight. So going there, first class, gotta say, only way you should fly now. Now whenever I fly coach, I feel like I am just the bane of the world. Coach sucks compared to first class. And, and, and Kansas City has beautiful barbecue. Amazing barbecue. Pretty cool city. But regardless of that, thank you very much, Allie, for being first in chat. And if you still are here, here is your compliment. Hi. How are you, Allie? I'm glad you are here. I love that we are friends. And I enjoy every little second that we hang out together. And of course, later on, I will give you a shout out. I'll give you a shout out peri peri periodically. Um, but yeah, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to play today, but I know I'm going to watch YouTube videos. I got a lot of YouTube videos to watch, but I don't think it's going to be a whole night of YouTube videos because that seems a little boring. So probably like for the first hour, YouTube, I don't know, maybe rage on some video games because people love me raging on fighting games specifically. But yeah, let, let's just start it, shall we? Hello, Sactos. Welcome to the stream. I am glad you are here and thank you for giving people the K KJs. People love the KJs. My my Valorant. Let me move my thing like there. I feel that that is cool. Have that little edge underneath me. But anyways, let's uh go over here, click on this done. And leave. Alright. So Valorant came out with the new music video. I'm excited to watch that. We're gonna do that and then just go completely random. Hi Queso, how you doing? I like that emote. Who is that emote from? Kayla? I, I don't know. Akalia. But cool. How you doing Queso? Welcome to the stream. I'm glad you're here. But Valorant has a new music video because it's the championship season and I'm excited to watch that. So this is a world premiere for me and maybe for all y'all. Let's see it. Oh, Astro, okay. Oh, right, okay. Cars, all right. Who's the person they're showing? Oh, it's the people that are them.
It be like that sometimes. That breeds. That was cool. Next week. Starts next week. Uh uh, I'll definitely check it out. Well, that was a fun video. Oliver? Cousin Evie. My mom always wanted to take me to England. There's a wedding coming up. You should come. Uh, I don't know what this is, but this looks creepy. I am the youngest business owner in Georgia. But when okay. I brought my business idea to my family, they was like, why hot the cart? My name is Mason Wright. I am 15 years old and I own a hot dog restaurant. Hello, how can I help you? I like collecting comics and I got to thinking, what if I did a superhero themed hot dog cart? I got the supplies and after doing a few bar mitzvahs, it was really paying off. Hot dogs is, is America's food. People do underestimate kids and teens. They teach us at a very young age that we can do anything. But then when we start doing the thing, uh, I've been craving a hot dog us, lately. We can do it. It is possible. When you come to Mesa Super Dogs, when you leave, you leave a superhero. And in the foreseeable future, I'm going to have to pay taxes. No one warned me about that. <laughs> it's very difficult math. Want my hot dog? Oh, for sure. Just no, no, no ketchup. I don't like ketchup. Aw, oh, someone should have told him about taxes. I want my hot dog too. Your own hot dog? So the Marvel Cinematic Universe simply oh, wouldn't be the global phenomenon that it is today without its bevy of entertaining and endearing characters, both heroes and villains alike. And the MCU's most iconic characters God, that seemed like bad now. And perhaps even specific ticks which differentiate them from it will. everybody it will. else. It will. But sometimes it's not actually to do with the character and more a wider behind the Thank scenes the it will, Sally. baseball explanation for how these character traits came to be. And that's what we're here to talk about today. As I'm Jules, this is what Culture.com, and these are 10 behind the scenes reasons for MCU characters' quirks. All right. Number 10, Yelena's hatred of superhero poses. Yeah, they never explain now, one that. Of the funniest and most memorable running gags in Black Widow is Yelena's mockery of Natasha's tendency to pose whilst performing a superhero landing. This culminates, of course, in Yelena doing a pose herself <laughs> after dropping out of event and immediately recoiling with self loathing, even calling it disgusting. I remember the joke that. actually wasn't part of the original script at all, but added to a subsequent draft by screenwriter Eric Pearson after he heard Florence Ooh, Pugh and nice. Scott Johansson fun talking lurking. during pre-shooting rehearsals. During an interview with MTV, Pugh confirmed that during stunt training she learned that the superhero poses you see in movies aren't realistic and everybody would die if they tried to land that way in reality. Pugh then passed this piece of information on to co-star Johansson, which was overheard by Pearson, who found the banter amusing enough to shape into a gag for the movie. Number 9. Tony Stark's it was a good movie. snacking. Beyond Tony Stark possessing a lightning fast wit, one of his most memorable traits is his tendency to snack during scenes, particularly in his earlier MCU appearances. Perhaps most memorably, he chows down on some dry blueberries while talking to Bruce Banner and Captain America in The Avengers. Yet, believe it or not, this action wasn't in fact scripted. Rather, this tendency to be grazing and snacking all the time was inspired by Downey's own very real hunger. Given the long days on any film set, let alone an MCU movie, Downey decided to. What's oh no, a commercial. Prop 26 and Prop 27? Why am 26 I getting props? doesn't fund California priorities like solving homelessness. How do they know I'm in California? Guarantees permanent funding to solve homelessness and addiction. Have my VPN on. Why, why is this on? I put on my VPN to not get ads or to get non specific ads. 
Visit your Volkswagen dealer and here it is. Well, it doesn't say which Volkswagen dealer. Limited inventory available. To hide snacks around the sets so that he could munch on them during shooting, possibly much to the irritation oh, I of the am. and continuity department. Sheesh. It's so rare to see super. I am excited to you go actually to eating in a Google. movie that it quickly caught the Hi, attention of many to this, fans who ultimately found it quite charming. To the stream, if Downey was really only doing it for the sake of his own blood sugar levels. Number eight. We're watching videos. Never swears. The MCU movies have all been unsurprisingly videos. rated PG-13, which include the three Spider-Man films co-produced by Sony. Now, though Peter Parker is basically a sweet, affable kid, he's also a teenager, so it's par for the course that he'd have a colourful vocabulary, which is true of most teens, really. Yes, While the PG-13 rating may seem like the prevailing of course, if you reason for why Peter Alley, hasn't ever do. verbally dropped any real profanity on screen in the MCU, we Best all know streamer that you can get away with some occasional swears in a PG-13 movie, but Peter's Cinematic conduct is ultimately oh, thank you for the chat out. executive mandate from Marvel Comics, who have certain rules and regulations for how their characters are portrayed on the big screen. The infamous Sony Pictures hack from 2014 revealed, amongst other eye opening things, the nature of Sony's agreement with Marvel, which dictates that Peter can't ever use any foul language, as well as torture, kill except in self defense, smoke, sell drugs, and be non white, gay, or a woman. As such, what? it would have been both thematically appropriate and hilariously shocking to hear Peter fully say what the f after his identity was revealed to the world in Far From Home's mid Yeah, you should scene, check him out. Decree from up on high ensured that it had to be cut off at the pivotal moment instead. Number seven, Hawkeye becomes a LARPer. One of the most mm -hmm. memorable parts LARPer, of the yeah, I remember that. Hawkeye Disney Plus show is when Clint and Kate are befriended by a group of live action role players. Hey, get wrecked. Thank New you for York. being here. This culminates in Hawkeye even getting involved into the LARP himself, agreeing to be defeated in combat in order to get his coveted suit back. It's an inspired and hilarious idea, but having Clint get involved in the LARP scene actually had some real life influence from Jeremy Renner's own fans. When the idea was first brought up, Renner loved it and decided to bring his own interaction and enthusiastic fans into the scene. He said in an interview with EW, based on my personal experience at comic cons and these kinds of environments, it's just me sort of saying, hey man, I love the fans. If Clint was going around play fighting with a bunch of people at comic con, I figured they'd get a big kick out of that. <laughs> I thought it was a cool way to show a sense of humility and bring a different kind of humor that to the show. That was a good scene Number though. Six, Pepper walking around Stark Tower barefoot. So Pepper Potts, played by Gwyneth Paltrow, appears for a few brief scenes in The Avengers, showing up for a date with Tony Stark in Stark Tower and then helping him remodel the tower at the very end of the film. In both of these scenes, oh, she's not wearing shoes. Pepper is barefoot, which may initially seem like an indication that she's extremely comfortable with Tony's lab slash abode, but considering how cold those marble floors surely are, that's not actually what director Joss Whedon was actually playing at. Oh, fuck Joss Whedon. This was a production choice intended to mitigate the height differences between the actors, what with Gwyneth Paltrow being an inch taller than Robert Downey Jr. Really? Instead, to achieve the wider shots of both actors that Whedon wanted, Paltrow had to ditch the shoes, while Downey famously wore platform lifts to make him a few inches taller. Now, while it is possible that Tony might have sprung for underfloor heating in Stark Tower, I didn't know he was that short. Pepper's barefoot traversal than merely feeling at home. Number five, Scarlet Witch's disappearing Oh uh, yeah, explain this. Though Elizabeth Olsen's performance as Scarlet Witch has largely been praised by critics and fans, some did oh, nevertheless oh, note how she suddenly oh, lost her distinct Sokovian oh, twang, oh, which disappeared oh, after oh, her first thank you for the appearance get in wrecked. Avengers Age of Ultron. In that film, Olsen had a strong Slavic adjacent accent, but by the time mm -hmm. Civil War rolled around just two years later, her accent was extremely faint by comparison and then basically gone entirely by Avengers Infinity War. Now, while it's reasonable to Except that Wanda's accent would have lessened over time, many fans nevertheless felt like it basically vanished too quickly to be believable. This wasn't actually a scripted decision or a choice made by Olsen herself though, with the actress confirming in an interview with Rolling Stone last year that it was a specific request from the Russo brothers while shooting Civil War. She oh, said, really? so that started with Civil War. The Russo said, can she just have a softer accent because she's been in America and has to have been speaking English more. So I was like, sure. Olsen did add, however, that after suppressing her accent entirely for the sitcom -y shenanigans of WandaVision, that she was going to give the character her original accent back a little more in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I don't think she did, Before, though. Loki's iconic knife flip. You might remember that in trailers for Thor Ragnarok, Thank you for the lurk, could Ali. be seen flipping his daggers in his hands like a total badass. And though this impossibly cool shot somehow didn't make it into the final film, the trick did reappear more recently. In 
the Loki Disney Plus series, we see the God of Mischief use the same dagger flip during an encounter with his variant Sylvie. But the origins of Loki's combat technique are more unexpected indeed. As it turns out, Tom Hiddleston improvised the knife flip while shooting Thor. Oh god, another ad. Grab my head! Wait, are you sweating? Thor Ragnarok because he'd finished performing his fight choreography a little early during a Loki is cool. Didn't want to look silly while the cameras were still rolling. He said in an interview with EW, I ran out of choreography. Basically, I think I finished my moves before Idris did and he was still rolling and I didn't want to just stand there like a lemon not doing anything interesting. So I just flipped the knives and caught them by chance and Idris laughed about it. We watched it back and he was like, oh god, he's gone and done a knife flip at the end because he was <laughs> finishing his fight moves. But yeah, it ended up staying. I've since tried to do it. Every time I try to do it with wooden spoons it never works and i always drop one so it's just one of those things but lightning never strikes twice number oh, okay. three bucky speaking romanian now bucky's first appearance in captain america civil war sees him resurface in romania where he's been lying low but soon enough attracts some rather unwanted attention we briefly see bucky in the marketplace buying some plums and speaking romanian now you may simply assume that bucky picked up some conversational romanian whilst living in the country or that his winter soldier indoctrination gave him a perfect understanding of it but the russo brothers actually decided to show off bucky's surprise fluency for one special reason as it turns out sebastian stan is himself a romanian american actor oh been born okay and living in romania until he was oh. eight years old oh, as such, the actor grew up with romanian as his native tongue and still has a strong grasp of it to this very day which was fittingly put to good use in this little scene where he asked about the ripeness of some plums that he wanted to buy number two okay. tony stark doesn't like being handed things in addition to relentlessly eating, Tony Stark's other big quirk is that he doesn't like being handed things. This is mentioned twice in Iron Man 2 and once more in The Avengers, where Agent Coulson attempts to hand him a folder. Now, this wasn't simply something that the filmmakers or even Robert Downey Jr. himself invented, though. It's actually a callback to the real-life figure who inspired Tony Stark's conception in the comics. Himself? See, Stanley originally modeled Stark oh. on legendary business magnate, billionaire, playboy, and defense contractor Howard Hughes, who was well known for his eccentricity and later his mental oh. illness particularly oh. his debilitating obsessive compulsive disorder hughes was also a germaphobe going as far as wearing tissue boxes on his feet in later life in an attempt to protect them and so tony's distaste for being handed objects is an homage to this originally the movies hammered that point home further as a deleted scene from the first iron man sees pepper following him around a dubai party with hand sanitizer we're left to assume that Tony eventually got a handle on his germophobic tendencies, though, which is probably a good thing when you've got a kid. And number one, mm. Captain America isn't hungry. Nobody who's seen the Avengers iconic post credit scene will ever forget it. It's not a portentous, tantalizing setup for a future film, but a hilariously simple shot of the exhausted heroes enjoying some shawarma <laughs> after saving New York City, in a callback to Tony Stark's prior remark about doing so. But if you pay close attention, you might notice that one of the Avengers isn't eating. Captain America instead rests his face on his fist without even taking a single bite. Well, he has a beer during that time. To even shovel some food into a America's mouth. Yet there's a vital practical reason behind this. The scene was shot at the very last minute, by which mm -hmm. point Chris Evans was in the middle of shooting the film Snowpiercer, where he sported a large beard. And so the Avengers makeup wizards eventually fitted Evans with a fleshy facial prosthetic to cover this beard, which due to its bulky size, he effectively had to pin to his face with his fist. If we ever saw him attempting to eat, the effect would have unavoidably just been given away. It's an impressively simple solution to a production issue, even if it did leave some fans questioning why Cap wasn't chowing down with his friends and there we go my friends those were that was good the that was a good one mcu characters quirks i hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below can't wait to go to disneyland well, next season, month follow me over no in two months retro j but the o is a zero oh, no 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 i'm going Instagram, to disneyland retro next j, month the o is a zero hope to see you over there but before I go, I just want to say one thing. Now, at the end of the day, every single one of us has got our own quirks, our own tendencies, our likes and dislikes, and that's what makes Land. us special. And that's what I want to remind you of today, my friend. You are a big ledge. You Aww, are special. No, and you deserve you are. love, happiness, and success, all right? Don't let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. I want you to go out there and absolutely smash your life goals today. I believe in you. Aww. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye. I like the messages at the end that he gives. I pity the fool who puts on my jewelry. Oh god. I do. I do. I'm gonna I feel old now.
Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 catchphrases kids today don't recognize. Oh God, Laura, get a feel old. I want my MTV. It's not your MTV. The MTV belongs to all of us. For this list, we're looking at popular oh God, what's up? that were once Let me know which ones you remember. But now are unrecognizable to most youth. Do you have a favorite old catchphrase? Just watching all of these, I know. Number 10, getting jiggy. Anyone born into Getting the new jiggy. millennium will likely have difficulty narrowing oh down God. where this one What's up? From. Then hip hop artist, now actor Will Smith. Getting jiggy with it. Getting jiggy with it in January of 1999. Both the tune and accompanying music video became a huge hit that year, prompting countless fans to get jiggy. The meaning behind it has changed slightly as the years have progressed. Doesn't mean like the dancing. The really was more about being completely uninhibited in how one dances in public. He doesn't like my taste in music? Guess not. You should have been there last year. I got jiggy with it. Just let it all out there like no one else matters. Today, oh, look at that folks beat. take it to be a more intimate term. But either way, oh, it still reminds yeah. us of that song. You are not going out and getting jiggy with some boy. I don't care how dope his ride is. Number nine. What's the 411? No one Long says text that. text messages and online What's the 411? People use their phones to actually, you know, talk. And when there was no Google, people could dial 411 on their phone and someone on the other end of the call would help them find the number for a person or business. Hello, operator. This is an emergency. Give me the fire department or the police or the paramedics. Somebody. I don't care. You decide. 411 Fucking became elf. synonymous with getting information. Naturally, those who had grown up with the yes, free Kesa. service started using the term in everyday language. Uh -huh. April, what's the 411, little mama? What's the hot goss? Who are you crushing on these days? Ew, made an elf it, joke? Oh, God. 411 became ubiquitous for asking someone for... Oh, you made an elf joke. Okay. She subject. said what's elf? Although the service still lives on, the saying has seen better days. In the parlance of the urban music scene, what's the 411? Number what is our play? You play and it records. You can choose exactly what you want it to record, whether it be kills, cysts, elf. deaths, wait. Yeah, Number they eight. like elf. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? Oh god, where's, where's the, the beef? <laughs> what the hell is that supposed to mean? <laughs> where's the beef? When McDonald's and Burger King are your two biggest competitors, what do you do to stand out from them? You poke a little Ooh, I kind of want Wendy's now. New ads. Wendy's released a commercial in 1984 where a senior citizen sees so much bread for their burger and asks the question, Where's the beef? The saying stuck among consumers, but not just in regards to the size of a burger. It became synonymous with looking far beyond the superfluities and getting at the heart of a subject. Rarely heard today, the saying lives on through memory and the wonders of YouTube. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? <laughs> Where's the beef? Number seven, take a chill pill. Take a chill pill? Long before Taylor Swift told us to calm down, they don't cut corners. Oh, wow. To try and temper their agitation. Back in the 80s and 90s, that sounds like a dad it joke. was fairly common to hear someone tell you to take a chill pill when you get a little too anxious, upset, or irritable. Where's Chip? Why isn't he here yet? He'll be here, okay? Take a chill pill? It was a staple of the era, especially given how ADHD had become far more prevalent at the time. Interestingly enough, however, I don't have a Discord anymore. Night Bob appeared in multiple books in the 1870s, which were allegedly used ignore that. I don't have a Discord anymore. Maybe one of those could have been used to dial someone down when needed. Take a chill pill. Okay. I don't. I don't like need to take you. a chill pill. Here, right there. Down the hatch. I really don't want to take this. Oh, God. Number six, all that and a bag of chips. Hey, there. I remember that. For all that and a bag of chips. What a cool phrase. I hope it never sounds dumb and dated. What do sick, dope, goat, and lit have in common? Oh, God, They're goat. all variations on a theme of being awesome. Whereas kids today might say something like, man, that's totally sick, there was a time when a bag of Doritos almost conveyed the same thing. All that and a bag of chips was frequently spoken by teenage kids of the 1990s when referring to things that were simply the best of the best. It seemed that anything that was great was somehow <coughs> made even better by adding a crunchy treat to it. Hey, we don't make this stuff up, we just list them. You ain't all that in a bag of potato chips. What are you talking about? Number five. What you talking about, Willis? 
The year was 1978, and NBC rolled out a new TV show called Different Strokes. It told the story of two African-American boys who went to live with a widowed, well-to-do Caucasian man. The late Gary Coleman played Arnold, the young boy who often was at the Didn't you see that office. earlier? Um, he'd often snap you back at his brother, saying, What you talking about, Willis? When he'd be confused or misunderstand something. Coleman would become well-known for his character and the catchphrase. Fans of the show years later would recite the quote whenever someone would make an incomprehensible comment. I think we already know what it is, don't we, Coach? What are you talking about, Willis? It's one of the older phrases on this list, but it still brings a smile to those who remember it. What you talking about, Mo? <laughs> <laughs> he is small. What you talking about, everyone? Number four. What's oh up? God, the what's up? Now, here's one we're sure a lot of people were glad to see fade into oblivion. Made famous through a series of Budweiser commercials from 1999 to 2002. And the frogs? Remember the frogs? Annoying to some. Hello? What's up? What's up? Yeah. A clearly exaggerated version of saying what's up. The big gag here is how long you can drag on the up portion of this phrase before it's gone too far. A god scary movie. <laughs> Amazingly, it's something that's found its way into the mainstays of pop culture and is still seen occasionally today. You miss Wasabi? It's been parodied and redone multiple times, including spots on The Simpsons, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and even The Office. What's up? What's up? What's up? Yet hardly anyone born in the 21st century will understand what they're saying. Oh God. What's up? What's up? We are free to be so old. Invitation and checks new blood into the whole. Right. Number okay. three, I pity the fool. Quick Mr. T. Question. Okay. Who is Lawrence Turow better known as? Mr. T. If you guessed Mr. T, you would be right. Appearing as Clubber Lang in Rocky III, his famous catchphrase almost comes off as a throwaway line while being interviewed before a match. No, I don't hate Balboa, but I pity the fool, and I will destroy any man who tries to take what I got. The quote stuck with him, and Tarot has been using it ever since. I pity the fool who didn't Did bring it an envelope to this bar mitzvah. With Often that movie? T has gone on record clarifying it's about showing mercy and not anger, but can easily be taken for the latter given who's delivering the line. I always took it as I pity the fool means I want to kill the guy. No, no, no. no. When you pity somebody, you're showing them mercy. Because I didn't start this pity stuff. It was in the Bible. It's become such an iconic part of his image that he had it trademarked so no one else could make use of it. I pity the fool who's illogical. <laughs> Number two. Oh, Pardon God, me, you great poop on. You know you've spent your advertising money well when even 40 years later, people I want still some great poop gross. Commercial. As one it's mustard. Car pulls up to another, one rider asks the other, Pardon me, would you have any gray poupon? But of course. The high end Dijon Mustard Company had been in business oh for God. more than 100 years before this famed commercial it's cemented mustard. them into the history books. Forever associating the brand with wealth, the slogan remained a heavy part of their advertising drives up. campaign Rich for people. several years, including a new version released in 2013. Pardon me, would you have any gray poupon? But of course. Because rich people have it. Sounds well, right. I do believe that well groomed man is driven off of that great poupon. It surely isn't part of your daily vernacular, but it's certainly something <laughs> oh, far God. more obscure than some on I want to do this. Pardon me, do you have any great poupon? <laughs> Before we continue, be sure some to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified. There was a video I saw videos. that. Talked about like rappers for videos, and hip hop artists would use that if you're on great phone, poupon. Make sure you go into your and settings think, and frankly, it's because of luxury. You know, that shows you got money. Number one, I want my, uh, MTV. my MTV. It was 1981 when music television debuted and aired. Video killed the radio star by the Buggles. Much the same way that MP3 changed music listening habits, so did MTV when they brought videos into our home. Within a year, the station's new slogan, I Want My MTV, helped influence thousands of young music listeners to tune in and see the latest and greatest videos. I want my MTV! I want my MTV! I want my MTV! Call your cable company and say, I want my MTV! It helped MTV become the place to be for all aspiring musicians. 
You were not going to get anywhere unless you had a video on MTV. The catchphrase was even included in the Dire Straits song Money for Nothing. Alas, you could argue that YouTube killed the music video network, along with this saying. Did you enjoy this video? You can still watch these MTV, MTV watch actually show. on Be YouTube. Sure to subscribe I think it's called like MTV Live or something like videos. that. And it just shows music videos. So you still get that MTV feeling with uh, new songs. I think it's also in some cables. I, I just don't know what channel. It was, um, Ray actually found it for me when she was, was over here in America for her visit. I was like, okay, you know, hung out, watched it. Oh God, this is kind of This loud. is Formula One. I'll leave it. As a new fan of the sport, watching these races for the first time, there's one thing I couldn't help but notice. F1 drivers are all over the road. Mm -hmm. To make a left turn, they go all the way to the right of the track, then swing back left. Through 90 degree corners, hairpins, turns that lead into other turns. And if I learned anything in geometry, it's that the quickest path between two points is a straight line. But what do that you do when you can't take You're the straight right, line does. path? For race car drivers, where they turn is one part of a larger strategy based on physics, practice, and a lot of skill. I'm going to use this information for Mario Kart. Drive laps through different circuits around the world at ridiculous speeds. The highest speed they get up to is something like 215 miles per hour. That's Brad Philpott. That's super fast. I've been racing since I was eight years old, and I've been teaching people how to drive on track for the last 15 years. I think the one area a Formula One car is better than pretty much all other cars is cornering speed. This is important because unlike other big motorsports like NASCAR, which require drivers to travel in mostly a symmetrical oval, F1 circuits contain every kind of corner you can think of. And racers want to get through those corners. This is racing 101, fast. okay. The racing line is purely and simply the fastest way through a corner or a set of corners. If you had unlimited grip and the car wasn't just going to roll over, you would always hug the inside. You would always go the shortest possible distance. But the fact is that the more your steering wheel is turned, the less speed your tires can cope with. Hugging the inside track means you'd have to slow down pretty severely to avoid losing grip and sliding out. Well, that's why you drift, the though. The edge might theoretically let you go faster, but you would be going a lot further, like massively further, depending on the width of the track. And as you can see from these F1 simulator shots Brad showed me, you'd also have zero margin for error because if you had a fraction of understeer or oversteer, you're immediately oh, on the grass and in the barriers. <laughs> The ideal racing line for a turn like this is a combination of both approaches. The driver can hug the outside of the track on the oh, way Oh damn, in, I would imagine, yeah. Then the apex, or the center of the inside track, and end up back on the outside edge without losing too much speed. By starting out as far wide as you possibly can, and then getting to the inside in that smooth flowing arc, you're literally minimizing the angle that your car is having to take, which oh, means fuck, you can have more speed. Fuck that. So far, we've been using this fake 90 degree turn example because it's simple to explain. But in real life, corners aren't that straightforward. The closest real world example is Stowe on Silverstone in the UK. But Stowe isn't really like that normal, typical 90 degree corner. It is a bit longer. You reach the apex of Stowe and you're there for a, a little while, a, at least a few tenths of a second, if not a second or so. So you still feel like- I don't know how I'm gonna turn this into Mario Kart. But you are definitely taking pretty much that typical line we spoke about. You can see that in this clip from the 2022 Grand Prix. Carlos Sainz leads the pack and takes this nearly textbook ideal racing line. But most corners are a little more complicated. A corner does not exist in isolation. So the racing line you take for a particular corner is almost always a compromise. Take this set of corners from that same Silverstone circuit. Oh God. Brooklyn's is the super tight one and it goes straight into Luffield. You're at the end of a very long, fast straight. You then end up in a sweeping left-hander where it gets tighter all the way around. And it's then followed by a really long right-hander. 
So, judging by what we've been discussing so far, you'd probably say that you they need to compromise go. your exit a little bit in the left-hander, so you wouldn't go all the way wide. However, in this example, you do almost the, the counterintuitive thing based on what we've already been learning. Luffield, which is the second corner, the right-hander, is a very, very long right-hander, well over 180 degrees. It nullifies most of the benefit you would get from going wide and then cutting back towards it. It's not an apex that you kiss, like in our 90 degree degree right-hander example, you meet the inside and you have to stay there. By trying to compromise the initial left-hander, yeah. you're actually just wasting time. You're wasting distance. And this is why this is such a complicated thing uh. and it doesn't have an easy answer. You can see all drivers having a slightly different approach to this particular set of corners in this clip from the 2022 Grand Prix. While the leading car tries to use the most ideal path hugging the curves, the following cars are more spread out. And did you catch that? No. These two cars almost collided. And oh, yeah. to avoid it, this driver went off the track, screwing up his racing line entirely. Once you have to contend with other drivers, racing lines become a lot more complex. God damn, this is very is complicated. Based on the track that's available to you. So you're still going to be going outside, inside, outside as much okay. as you can, but that will be on maybe half the track width. If the weather is wet and rainy, that adds even more complexity. Racers may compromise their line even further in search of areas of the track that have more grip. Formula One drivers are constantly making calculations to adapt to any condition and still maintain a good racing line. And they can do that because they're not thinking of the line as they're driving. They just do it. If I went to pretty much every F1 track, even tracks I've never actually been to before, I would probably know pretty much where I want the car to be from driving on simulators or watching videos. Oh god, is that so like... It's, it's not a guess. Well, it's not a video game, but Once still. race day arrives with all its variables and rivalries, the focus is no longer on ideals. It's on the strategic compromises a racer is willing to make to get ahead of the competition. That's really what separates drivers. You've got various inputs that you're making as a driver. Throttle input, braking, steering, changing gear, communicating with the pits, conversing with your engineers, strategy. But the biggest one of all of those is the steering. It is the line you're taking. Wow. Who knew racing would be so complex? All right, next video. Yeah, but these Vox videos are really, really good about something I never even know about. And here I am like, wow, that's very complex. Here at City of Refuge, we house up to 26 families. We reduce homelessness. Sacramento. mental health. Provide spaces for addiction. Man, that is... Oh, baseball, let's you, go. That, that is a blatant act right there. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 unsportsmanlike moments in baseball. One of those guys you looked at and said, that's a Hall of Famer. Well, a Hall of Fame career, perhaps, but the choice that he oh, made to performance-enhancing drugs, to me, that does not define a Hall of Famer. For this list, we'll be looking at times players took cheap shots, disrespected each other, or acted against the spirit of baseball and the code of honorable competition. What moments of disrespect had I wonder who's going to go injuries? into the World Series Vent this year. Comments below. Haven't even Number been 10, watching baseball Yuli this Gurriel's year. Gesture to you, Darby. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Fuck World him. Houston Astros first baseman Yuli Gurriel gave the bleacher seats a souvenir off you Darvish's fastball to give his team a 1 0 lead over the LA Dodgers. That is smoked. That is gone. 1 0 Houston. In thoughtless celebration, Gurriel gestured toward the Dodgers pitcher by pulling back his eyelids and uttering a racial slur. The Fuck offensive him. act enraged fans and resulted in Gurriel's eventual suspension from the first five games of the 2018 season. That there is no place in our game for the behavior or any behavior like the behavior we witnessed last night. Japanese-born Darvish reacted like a gentleman, posting a heartwarming tweet that promoted unity and positivity. Gurriel later apologized and expressed gratitude that he had learned from the experience. It seems unsportsmanlike conduct can sometimes have a silver lining. I didn't, I, I didn't know it wasn't going to be that offended. I just feel, like I say, I just feel bad. You know, I apologize, and whoever got offended over there, it was not my intention. Number nine, Weatherford College pitcher makes a tackle. Oh, okay, huh. have you seen this video here? It's already approaching five million views on Twitter. There's benches clearing fights, and then there's this. College batter Josh Phillips from North Central Texas had just hit a go-ahead home run and rounded the bases in traditional celebration. 
As he reached third, however, Weatherford College pitcher Owen Woodward apparently forgot what sport he was playing as Woodward stampeded oh, he off got the mound pissed. and tackled nah. opponent like a linebacker. Oh, oh, That's my. me. Oh, no. Oh, no. Come on, dude. That was out of nowhere. Sure, fights happen amongst competitors, but this extravagant display of unsportsmanlike conduct seemed to have no provocation. While Woodward was initially suspended, the Weatherford coach later confirmed that Woodward was no longer with the team. Frustration is part of the job if you're an athlete, and this is one cautionary tale about the wrong way to unload your anger. Mm -hmm. Weatherford's head baseball coach said in a Twitter statement that the team is shocked and disappointed and completely embarrassed, and that the pitcher, Woodward, could even be expelled from school. Damn. Twisted tea is a refreshing Twisted tea. Made with real brew tea. Keep it Who likes that? Number eight, Ben Davis buns to end a perfect game. While this example may not technically break any unwritten rules, it sure violates the spirit of respectable baseball. In May 2001, Arizona Diamondbacks pitcher Kurt Schilling was working a perfect game against the San Diego Padres. Having allowed no runners on base... Oh, no, don't innings, tackle me. Ben Davis memorably broke the perfect game with a bunt. I'll tell you what, from a macho standpoint, a lot of guys won't like that. Nope. For context, but why? perfect games are extremely rare achievements yes. in baseball. With only 23 ever officially recorded. Correct. In this scenario, the bunt was a cheap and unstrategic hit that robbed Schilling of his shot in the history books. Could you imagine Forrest Gump running nonstop across America only to be tripped? Yeah, it's something like that. Oh, okay. Number seven, Izzy Alcantara kicks Jeremy Salazar. Ooh. There have been many brawls in baseball history. In fact, we have a whole video about it. Yeah, that that's why. Out, though, that makes sense. It started with a kick. When the Pawtucket Red Sox faced the Scranton Wilkes-Barre Red Barons in AAA play, batter Izzy Alcantara dodged the pitch that passed a bit too close oh, to the Oh, dang. Play. In sudden retaliation, he turned and stomped catcher Jeremy Salazar directly in his face mask. A benches clearing Donnie Brook followed, but it's the shameless and unwarranted kick that's become famously rewatched footage. It's not only unsportsmanlike conduct, it's an unfair cheap shot in any one-on-one -on -one throwdown. Bad form, Izzy. Bad form. Number six, Brian Walker fakes a hit by pitch. Ah, oh, no, that, that was... No. Sports and theater may have some commonalities like the butterflies that players feel before taking the main event. Brian Walker took that a bit too far in an no. SEC West game between Arkansas and Ole Miss. The batter for Arkansas seized an opportunity to convince officials that an inside pitch had struck him on the arm. You know, from that angle, it doesn't even look like it got close to him. Contact with a 90 mm -hmm. mile an hour pitch grants the batter first base, and Walker really showed off his acting chops to get the call. He danced around and clutched his arm in apparent pain, but nobody really bought it. Injuries in athletics are an extremely serious matter, and faking one to gain unfair advantage is an extreme mockery of the game. The officials promptly ejected Walker, and his atrocious acting now makes for <laughs> hilarious footage. He's acting like a little kid. Number five, Albert Bell's malicious contact. Oh. This was just like the play in the third inning. And it was Albert Bell back in the third inning. And they're not going to do anything about that? We're back to the major leagues where experienced players know better than this, supposedly. Runners advancing from first will often slide combatively into second, hoping to avoid a double play and two damaging outs. Albert Bell took this way too far when barreling through second baseman Fernando Vina. Bell appears to forcibly shove Vina out of the way, knocking the fielder from his feet. As with Alcantara's kick, this aggression is simply uncalled for and can be outright dangerous. Yeah. That's the whole reason that a malicious contact penalty exists in the rulebook. Rumors flew that the move was retaliation for an earlier play. Even so, this kind of aggression is not cool. It's no wonder this dramatic violation still gets many replays throughout sports media. Number four, Roberto Alomar and the spitting incident. It's surprising we oh haven't God, yet mentioned spit. umpires on our list as their hotly contested calls can be deciding factors in game outcomes. When the Baltimore Orioles visited the Toronto Blue Jays in 1996, a called strike three on Roberto Alomar sent the batter into outrage yeah, against much. late umpire John Hirschbeck. But I like baseball because there's a lot of statistics and math when Alomar continues to, to it. Off at Hirschbeck, the but then there's like beautiful Alomar. shit that happens. I just like, whoa, that's amazing. Alomar was so furious, went so far as to confront the official and literally spit in his face. And that's what I call a quality tool. Alomar claimed that Hirschbeck had used racist remarks and he later made insensitive comments regarding Hirschbeck's family history. 
Fortunately, the two would make amends, shaking hands before a game months later, and even became friends afterwards. <laughs> Nerd. Oh god, I don't want to drink. Ugh. Number three, Pedro Martinez and Don Zimmer brawl. Oh my goodness. Don Zimmer and Pedro Martinez. Where did the other oh. coach? He looked like he was ready. Even non-baseball fans might expect a Red Sox versus Yankees appearance here, but perhaps not quite like this. The Bronx Bombers and the Sox faced off in the 2003 championship series where a series of questionably motivated pitches led to a brawl. Al Ramirez. That ball's not even close. It was during the showdown that Red Sox pitcher Pedro Martinez grabbed coach Don Zimmer by his cranium oh. and hurled him to the ground. Don Why Zimmer, he came running though? Old man went into Pedro Martinez's face and Pedro Martinez threw him down. It's unscrupulous conduct for baseball, a low blow for a fight and an everlasting black stain on Martinez's career. But he charged two, them. Houston Astros sign stealing scandal. Oh, we need God. to move forward with a clean slate. And the Astros will become stronger, a stronger organization because of this today. In 2019, an official MLB investigation found that the Houston baseball team had been using cameras to steal pitch signs from opposing teams' catchers. And the evidence was so profound that the, an hour, one hour, after the Major League Baseball's ruling came down, those dudes were fired. That's evidence. I'm sorry. The illegal practice had been giving the team a disgracefully unfair advantage as far back as the 2017 season. During wow. that time, Astros slugger Jose Altuve won MVP over Yankee hero Aaron Judge. And Houston defeated the Los Angeles Dodgers in the 2017 World Series. Well, Stadium. that's okay. The scandal made those accolades particularly disgraceful, and some even called for Houston to relinquish the championship trophy. Based on what we know now, what we know from the commissioner's investigation, is that championship tainted? It's a fair question, and, and I think everyone's going to have to draw their own conclusion. More devastatingly, it caused many fans and players to question the sanctity of the very game. That's a blemish that baseball history is unlikely to forget. I am really sorry about the choices that were made by my team, by the organization, and by me. I have learned from this. And I hope to regain the trust of baseball fans. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell really to get notified so about our I'm latest really videos. I'm really sorry. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, I wonder what's number sure one. Oh, it's probably Barry Bonds. Switch on notifications. Number one. Oh no. Black Sox scandal. Sports writer Hugh Fullerton smells a rat. He suggests in the New York Evening World that White Sox players were fixing the World Series. A claim that casts a deep shadow on the national pastime. Populating other Watch Mojo lists on shameful incidents, this baseball controversy remains infamous. The conspiracy suggests that the Cincinnati Reds' victory during the 1919 World Series was the result of a ploy by the Chicago White Sox, who purposefully lost the championship for gambling profit. Those suspected, notably shoeless Joe Jackson, were tried and found innocent. He's remembered for what he might have done. And that suspicion that maybe he didn't really do it or didn't know what he was doing because he was an ignorant I know he's sorry. boy. Maybe that's what makes him most famous of all. However, eight professional players, including Jackson, were still banned from baseball for life. Though details Damn, of their okay. culpability is still debated today. Sports are meant to unite us in competition and camaraderie. Using them for profit in this way may be the most unsportsmanlike offense there is. Those eight Black Sox have paid the price for our forgiveness of the flaws and the errors and the frailties of all these superstar athletes that have followed. If the sins of the fathers are less in this case than the sins of the sons, in my opinion, and those men were scapegoated. Did you enjoy this video? Check yeah, out these other okay. clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Did I just get a new follow? If I did, I do apologize. Let me check real quick. Uh, the, mm, no. Peggy, hey, Vee, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. You just woke up from your nap. Damn. 
So video games are generally such huge well, and expensive works of art that they're rarely boiled down to just a single moment, good or bad. But you know, watching every YouTube so videos. often, a video game will serve up a scene so jaw-droppingly demented, disturbing, oh or outright offensive that it damn near wipes away so all days. the fun times yeah. that you had playing it. And that's what we're here to talk about today. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 gaming moments everyone wishes they could unsee. Number 10. Sonic getting kissed by a human woman. Oh, God. Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. As long as Sonic the Hedgehog exists and I still people haven't seen are the second video games, fans will never be able to forget the single most Chris infamous and the boulder, churning yeah. moment in the series' history, and it's that damn kiss. 2006's Sonic the Hedgehog reboot was intended to be a clean slate for the beleaguered franchise, and while the game at large was panned by critics, its grandest crime of all was having Sonic make out with a human woman. Nice, great. No, please, I definitely want to see that. Cute, After apparently being killed near the end of the game, Sonic is then resurrected with the Chaos Emerald's power courtesy of Princess Elise, but for no apparent reason during that ritual, she plants a full-on kiss on Sonic's lips. Beyond the obvious fact that Sonic is unconscious and can't consent to the kiss, oh. going for the lips adds another layer of romantic weirdness to it. Had Elise simply given Sonic a platonic peck on the forehead or cheek, oh, I well, I a lot less of us would have been bothered, but going full-on bestiality invited thoughts and questions that nobody ever wanted from a Sonic game of all things. Number nine. Heather vomits a fetus and Claudia eats it. Silent Hill I've never 3. played that Silent Hill game. The context protagonist Heather Mason learns during the game that she's being used as a vessel to give birth to the god worshipped by the cult residing in Silent Hill. Now, given that the god's birth would result in Heather's death, she decides instead to forcefully Not purge the god okay. fetus Thank by consuming a special herb, which in occult law wards off demonic entities. And so Heather promptly pukes up the crimson red fetus, a nauseating feat in of itself, before the the cult's high priestess Claudia then decides that she will become the god's vessel instead and goes about eating it. This leads to Claudia birthing the god and dying, with the player then battling the newborn creature in the game's final boss fight. Silent Hill has never been afraid to push the envelope with objectionable content, but it's also never been I've quite never as primeval level game. of gross as one person yucking up a gestating fetus and somebody else devouring it. Number 8. Leticia the Racist Caricature Deus Ex Human Revolution now, now, Deus Ex Human either. Revolution is a mostly great game, but what the hell were Eidos Montreal thinking with this blatantly racist caricature of an NPC? You see, during the game, players will come into contact with an informant by the name of Letitia, a black woman uh... who is written and performed as a massively offensive stereotype. Now, obviously, a portrayal of an impoverished black woman with a thick southern accent isn't inherently racist, it's but not a good it's game. all about all right. context, tone, and execution. Here she feels less like a full-bodied character and more sort of like a performative cartoon that you'd expect to see in a very racist show 150 years or so ago, not as a black woman existing in 2027. Amid the backlash, Eidos did eventually issue a statement which basically hand-waved the criticism but showed how much criticism they got, yet over a decade later she endures as by far the worst part of an otherwise pretty fantastic title. Number 7. Johnny and Meryl get engaged out of nowhere. Metal Gear Solid Four Guns of the Patriots. There's perhaps no greater example of Metal Gear Solid 4 being an excessive, if entertaining, exercise in fan service than Hideo Kojima's decision to make Meryl and Johnny a romantic pairing during the game. Now, Johnny was a joke character in previous titles, yet reinvented here as a more fleshed out human being, albeit still one with some major digestive issues. Throughout the game, he's part of Meryl's rap patrol team, and after saving Meryl from drowning in Europe, the two share a kiss. But the most unbearable part of Meryl and Johnny's unexpected forced romance Shoulders was the uh, weird proposal scene. Late in the game, the pair are teaming up to fend off against a seemingly unending wave of Haven troopers, when Johnny suddenly reveals that he's always been in love with Meryl and abruptly proposes like her to hair. her on the spot. In between gunfire, Meryl rejects him, and when Johnny suggests that they move in together instead, Meryl replies that she wants to do oh, things her way, read, in turn Michelle. proposing to Johnny. A shocked Johnny agrees thank as you, they continue you. mowing for those down who do Haven not know me, troopers. My name 
Come and sit up from the block Johnny and that he shouldn't even we're think just chilling about cheating watching YouTube videos. Wants How was your game? Thank you for the raid. Before they then share a passionate smooch. You'll be lurking, Though the scene is clearly much. meant to be campy and heightened, it's also one of the most thank embarrassing you for the moments from any Hideo Kojima uh, game. Farrah? It is right up there with quiet dancing seductively in the rain and Metal Gear Solid the uh, Mario and Princess Beach thing in Death Stranding. You flew Redis. too close to the sun on this one, Hideo. Yeah, Number Red six, Dead. The weirdly You're replaying it again, huh? Sex scenes. Ride to Hell Retribution. And then there's the infamous 2013 action adventure Yeah, Train you were like five Ride hours, huh? Retribution, which was panned by critics in practically every way that a video game could be panned. Reviewers drew particular attention to the game's Is misogynistic the treatment game? of women and especially its baffling, nausea-inducing sex scenes, in which all participants keep their clothes on throughout. Yep. During the game, you're able to rescue a number of imperiled women who offer up their bodies to protagonist Jake Conway as a, air quotes, reward, resulting in these toe-curlingly awkward sex scenes oh, in which nice, both nice. Jake and the woman in question clumsily gyrate around I kinda without removing a single it again, item of clothing. We'll it doesn't help, of course, that you're usually saving these women from brutal abuse and so to immediately cut to some rutting is tonally jarring to say the least, if not outright problematic. Number five, the dinner dance. Infinite Undiscovery. I never Square heard of Enix's this game. action RPG, Infinite Undiscovery, lives on almost 50... Oh, we got an ad. When you shop at Walmart, you get it. You spend a little less. But yeah. Well, I hope um, you're enjoying replaying it again. Are you going to run the same scenarios or are you going to try different things? See if it's slightly different. Because I know the game ultimately will be the same. But, you know. What will be the difference? Oh god, I have to wait for the side too. I hope you can remain a part of this. Arcane only on Netflix. Give me Valorant, after its then I'll watch the show. thanks to one meme-worthy scene that represents some of the most cringe-inducing writing and voice acting the medium has ever seen. During one of the game's cutscenes, a pair of twins inform the player character Capel that it's dinner time and that he should join them. Announcing their hunger, they then dance off into the distance while singing dinner, 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 with Capel eventually joining in on the singing and the dancing. Now, the other party member, Aya, is basically the player at this point, looking on in horrifying disgust at this painfully awkward display before then begrudgingly joining the trio for some grub. I mean, look, it's it's a JRPG, so some cringe is basically par for the course due right. to the dialogue being translated from Japanese to English, but even so, this horrendous exchange delivers a thermonuclear level of second-hand embarrassment. <coughs> Number four, Ryder tries to flirt with Suvi. Oh, I've never played Andromeda. this game. Though unlike most other entries on this list, Mass Effect Andromeda's painful flirtation between protagonist Ryder and science officer Suvi is at least supposed to be cringy as all hell, but that doesn't make it any less difficult to watch though, perhaps in part because of the agonizingly bad flirting, which just feels too damn real and relatable. Despite Bioware oh, bad promising flirting, that Andromeda's I love romance flirting. options would be more extensive, they were met with a fairly divisive response from players, particularly Zaha. with regard to how the game portrays uneasy courtship through relentlessly awkward flirtation. And this is never worse than when Ryder tries to chat up Suvi, leading to this deep Deeply wonky exchange in which Ryder schizophrenically transforms from a, from a self-assured pathfinder to a jittery neurotic pile of mush. After Ryder tells Suvi that she's glad that she's part of her crew, Suvi says that she's honored to be on board, only for Ryder to snappily retort with, no, I mean, I think you're cute and I like seeing you up here. As Suvi oh, becomes wasn't good, clearly okay. uncomfortable, Ryder continues to talk about how much she loves Suvi's accent, before then announcing aloud but I kind of want to plead this for this. being a pilot now. Hilariously, we then cut to the pilot, who says exactly what every player is thinking, which is, kill me now. Number three, the white phosphorus <gasps> oh, attack, damn. Spec Ops The Line. Oh look, it's what culture's most favorite son, Spec Ops The Line. I haven't spoken about this in, uh, let me just check my watch here. Uh, ooh, a week now, fantastic, great. Midway through the game, protagonist Walker and his team deploy a white phosphorus attack on an enemy position, with the player even carrying out the battery themselves from a drone. You then head to the site of the assault, where it's revealed that you actually didn't melt a cavalcade of oh, armed God. enemy soldiers, but also 47 innocent civilians who were simply seeking refuge in the area. To rub salt in the wound, Walker stumbles across the charred remains of the civilians, their flesh having melted to the bone. And worst of all, the game zooms in on the remnants of a mother cradling her child. Oh, God. Their bodies both grotesquely disfigured by the white phosphorus. Needless to say, you won't actually want to look into the real world effects of white phosphorus and what it can do to the human body for the it sake of your sanity, but spec up the line 
Line gave players a pretty damn good idea in supremely feel bad wow. fashion. Number two, Cloud's um, hand massage. Final <laughs> Fantasy VII remake. Oh, this? Thing the this? Totality of human existence could I have remember gone this. Seeing or even thinking about Cloud Strife's O face. In the genuinely <laughs> brilliant wall market oh, section of Final Fantasy VII's remake, players this? are introduced to the new I character, forgot. Madam M, who operates a massage parlor yes, in the area. Cloud and company end up visiting the parlor for a rub down. Though when Madam M informs them that the parlor specializes in hand massages, she's actually being far more literal than anyone expected. Indeed, Madam M's business consists of rubbing customers' hands in a sensual and relaxing way. And that's it. Yet it doesn't take much reading between the lines to see what Square Enix is getting at here. And if you select the luxury massage option, you'll be treated to a traumatic cutscene in which Cloud receives a quite the hand job. In the scene, Madam M seductively applies hand cream to Cloud's fingers, tells him to relax, and starts kneading away. The shots are frequently framed to imply that Madam M is doing more than rubbing his hand, and the quasi-orgasmic reaction shots from Cloud only further seal that grotty deal. This all reaches a literal climax when Madam M works the fingers more vigorously, and upon asking Cloud if this is how he likes it, he lets out a moan of pleasure before the scene
All right, I am back. I forgot about this game. I think I'm very close to ending this game, so that's what we're gonna play, Peacekeepers. I honestly forgot I was playing this, so it's gonna be cool. I It doesn't have a soundtrack, weirdly enough. So we're just going to, um, we're just going to make our own soundtrack with it, which I need to go to here. I think it was a Super Nintendo game. Definitely good face. Very suitable. Aw, thank you. Horny. 35. <laughs> That's not bad. Or not. Oh, I think it is. If you think it is, I think it is. Okay, so we're going to play some music because surprisingly this game, Peacekeepers, I forgot that one. Nah, I, I took out Wet for Horny because Horny is more, not, or it's more universal, if you will. Oh shit. Um, Okay, there's my suspend suspension point. Snake Polinsky Avenue. Am I starting over? I think I am. I don't think I saved this. Load 17. Wow, over a month ago I played this. Okay. Well, this musical is not suited, so we'll go with this one. Because I feel this is a very dark game. And it seems a little perfect for this sort of this sort of thing because yeah for whatever reason this game does not have background music so we have to continue it. but i think i'm starting over let me try something because i don't remember being this far in oh geez oh i forgot this game sucks. Oh, jeez. Okay. They're clearly kicking my butt. Don't I have a punch button? I think she only kicks, right? on that weird uppercut. What are my buttons? What does left, right do? Block? Oh, that's block? Okay. It's... It's a bad clone of Streets of Rage. See? I have music on. Because literally, there is no music on here. This is what it is. So I feel bad for whoever did play this back in the day and was like, this is what your, this is your gameplay. Oh, I think I have my turbo on. Whoa. But I like beat em up, so, oh jeez. Okay, she's dead. Uh, start. Okay. I feel like... I don't know what level I'm at. I don't even know what the hell's going on in the storyline. It's not that I'm rage quitting. Bam. Okay. There was a rock. Oh. I forgot I could do that. Nah, see, I never grabbed this bat. So this is new. Oh, fuck. Me. Right? Can you imagine? 
Oh, jeez. I need to learn how to block. This game is just bad. I mean, it has potential. Oh, jeez. Let me just bonk you. Oh, jeez. And... Oh, take my knee. Okay, cool. But yeah. That's why I put music. Just music alone makes it better. Oh, jeez. God damn. I feel like I need to turn it up a little bit more on the sound. That seems about right. Start her. Okay, let's go. Can I go up here? Well, no, maybe I have to beat them. Ah, really? He wasn't even facing me. What? That was like multiple kicks. Oh, I see. I knew there was something back there. Oh, that guy just bonked me. And he bonked me again. What the hell? Oh, man. Okay, got my hyper on. Oh, God, there's ads on this? Okay, there it is. I'm like... Okay. Is that it? Oh, you. Yeah, take the knee. Take the knee. Oh. Norton? Correct the window. There's some action ahead of you. Might need help with... My, I join you. Absolutely. Okay, because he said correct the mundo. I do not trust them. Who says correct the mundo? Oh, fuck. Where the fuck is he? Dude. Oh, wow. So it looks like there's a special button, but I don't know how to activate that. Oh, jeez. It just came out of nowhere. Blade? Ah, wrong button. Ah, oh, but I still got him. Okay. There's my knee. Ah, oh, jeez. Ah, oh, jeez. Nope, nope, nope. Wow, I did not get them those two times. All right. Correct the Mundo guy needs help. Where the hell did he go? Oh, but, all right. Oh jeez, those those little blows are really bad. Oh, gonna shank you. Pick it up. Oh jeez. Sheesh. 
So am I using up that player's continues? Oh jeez. Got him. Nope. Ah, he moved. There he goes. Oh, whoa, 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 buddy. Whoa, buddy. Oh, you could slide? Why can't I? Oh, there's gotta be something in these barrels. Oh, that guy almost got me. Jeez. They do not give me a chance. Alright. Oh, jeez. I threw my knife. Alright, there we go. I think I'm getting the hang of this game now. Oh jeez, two of you guys. Oh jeez. Oh, and a yellow jacket one. Jeez, alright. Ah, oh, I could have timed that perfectly. There it is. Oh, Super Saiyan mode. Okay, I was afraid I wasn't going to get anyone. Oh, jeez. Ah. Oh. I know I thought that gave me more continues. Okay, gotta wait. Ah, oh, really? Wow, okay. I feel like their hitboxes are very wanky, but mine are like... They could hit me anywhere and the hitbox will go through. Oh jeez. Oh fuck no 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 no. Definitely need that. What does the coke do? Nothing. Not even an extra life. Oh no the kid! What? Lucky, 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 knock on wood, rabbit, rabbit. Treat me good. Are these the Steiner brothers? Gore, be quiet. We got work to do. Kumbaya. Oh, jeez. Oh, fuck. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. I'm getting decimated. Jeez! Sun Brothers suck. You need Pepsi? That's why I didn't work? Wow! Because it was Coke? Jeez. Oh no, there's a commercial. Alright, alright. Sorry, kids. We're, we're figuring this out. I need Pepsi, that's why. Oh, jeez. How can I block that? Oh wait, I could block, I forgot. I blocked that. Game over. I felt like it gave me a lot more continues. I felt like I could just start from the get-go. 
Well, the piece was not kept. Can I skip levels? Angry mode on. Music mode. Ooh woo. Ooh woo. Ooh woo. Ooh woo. Thank you for the ooh woo, chef. How you doing? Welcome to the stream. I'm glad you're here. Do I have to start over, over? Now it begins. I gotta hurry. Oh, I have 12 continues. I don't know if I wanna go through the whole thing. I love that, aww. You know what? We're gonna cheat. Is it these buttons? There we go. We are going to cheat everyone. Why? Because I can. We're gonna... S the beginning of this fight. See how back this memory goes. Oh, jeez. I'm doing pretty good. How about you? How was your day? Did you do anything exciting? Oh, okay. So this is where it loads. Okay, so start. Uh, we'll create a suspension point right here. Oh, literally one continue. Okay. This is the this is the strap. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh my god. They They're not letting me go. Oh jeez. Oh wow. Okay. Let me see if there's like a level select because I feel that would help me a lot if there's like a level select sheet or something like that. So the peace keepers, SNES, cheats, codes. Oh, game facts. We we're just talking about this. can't have a level select wow start story mode with all six characters there's six characters okay let's try this at the Jericho logo hold oh, I can't hold left and right because I'm using this Okay, so let's figure out how to use the SP in this game. What is this game called? The Peace Keepers. God, I'm looking at a walkthrough. Spoilers, spotlights, 
effect, spike bat, speed. Okay. Nothing about the SP. Uh, maybe if I put special moves. Will afford your special moves such as a stab. In order to perform stab, you need to perform. Think. Oh, I need a break. Three point three. Al Flynn. Echo. Oh, so jump A. T? What's T? Taunt? Knee strike. F forward A? Oh my god, I didn't even know this had that complex. Double jump, Phoenix Jar backflip, Echo Scream, TS. What's S? Okay, where's what's a special? What's her taunt, T? Am I looking at the right character? Al, oh, okay. Flynn, Echo. Jump escape. Then how do you taunt in this game? How do you in the Peacekeepers SNES. Everyone can taunt with the X button. Oh god. Alright. Sorry y'all. We're, we're, we're learning this game. What did it say? The X button? I don't think I ever seen it taunt. Alright. Oh, that's what that is. I'm trying to learn this move. Taunt. Oh, there it goes. Taunt XA. Okay. Uh, maybe I have to do a combo of X and A. Oh, there we go. X A. Jeez. I'm pretty invulnerable when I do that. Okay. Ah, oh, he wasn't on the screen. Oh, jeez. And then they clobber me. Ah, oh, that was so close. Okay. So I know right off the bat, I have two taunts. So I need to do those two taunts right away. So probably like attack and then leave. 
Oh no, I do not want to override this data. Load. I am literally on my last life. I think this is the final boss? Or I sure hope so. Okay, I got my two taunts in. But they're just so fucking... Look at this. That literally killed me. Oh, I'm like, I thought they grabbed me. Oh jeez. No, no, no. Let me down. Okay. There we go. And I would play it in the beginning, but like it's just such a grind. This game is not that good. Oh jeez. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. Okay. That was close. Load. Let me see what other things I could do. How? Yeah, this game sucks. But, you know, I got this far. I need to do it. Strong kick. So jump A. Jump A. D? What's D? Block, maybe? Block. There is no... Oh, down. Okay. Up, down. Okay, that's pretty easy. Nah, wrong character. Flynn. I'm looking at a game facts right now. So jump A... Down A during jump? No, I can't do that. Dash A. I'm doing that. Dash, jump, A. Forward A is a Frankensteiner. Taunt Irish whip. Taunt escape will occur in storm mode when your Irish whip will occur in a Oh, okay. So that doesn't work. So, just down. Front A. Front A. I think I can remember front A. Quarter circle front? Okay. Could seem part of your life. Okay. So, just a lot of A's with forwards is what I need to do. I feel like I'm getting sweaty here. Like it's crazy. So let's let us let us try it again. I, I guess this is what we're doing. Passing the stupid game. Oh, I almost missed that one. Ah oh, no! Okay. That was a bad one. Oh. There we go. Jump. 
down A. Oh, they fucking grabbed me. Hold on. Okay, we're, we're gonna play it like this. No. I'm sorry, we're gonna play it like this. Just for the fact that oh god. I I that shouldn't affect me actually. I need to knock him down to what? What just happened? Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck this game. Oh my god. Okay, I think I cannot go further from that move. Don't touch me. Is there a time limit? It just seems weird that I die right here. Right? It just seems weird. Let me do it after before the grab. No. Okay. That was a stupid move. No, nope, he still grabs me, okay. Ah, oh, wrong button. Oh god, okay. Nope, I ran right into that one. Oh jeez. I want to get them down to both yellow bars, or at least one of them down to his final bar. Oh jeez, he just picked me up. Drop me. That, that's it. No, wait. Continue, continue. We'll, we'll play this one out. Ah, oh, really? I had a good one here. Nope. Ooh, oh my god. Okay, I feel like I'm lined up perfectly here. I didn't run! The fuck? Okay, let me try it one more time. Okay. Oh, I'm I'm just breathing now. So I have to take it. All right. Echo. Uh, let's go right here. Oh, geez, wrong buttons. It's okay. That's okay. I really hope these are the last bosses. Oh my god. The fuck? They're just so tough. Oh my god. Okay. Peacekeeper, you you might have you might have beat me. I just wish there was a level select. I don't understand why there isn't one here. But I'll try for another 10 minutes. If not, it's going to go on the rage list. Cuz it's it's getting me.
あーなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあなあ Let me do it from here. Oh, geez, really? I feel like there's a mechanic here that I'm not utilizing. Alright, go back. Nope. Okay, go back. Oh, geez, that was a good. Alright, right there. Oh no, I gotta wait a second. Nope, no, no. We're, we are doing very well. I could beat this dumb game, even if I have to cheat. Oh no, I, I'm kind of stuck here. Oh, he does two of them? That doesn't seem fair. Oh, okay. Hold on. Uh, from there. I'm doing so well. Even though I'm cheating. Uh, that was a good one. Nope. Still grabs me there. Jeez. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, jeez. No. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay. Ah, oh, wrong button. Ah, oh, wrong button. Okay. Ah, oh, jeez, wrong button. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I think I can do it one more time. Nope. Ah, oh, jeez. Ah, uh, yeah, that does take up health. Okay, one down. Do I get health or anything? Okay. Alright, I'll, I'll take the L for this one. I hope my screams really help me. Okay. Okay, we're gonna create a suspension point. I think we're in pretty good mark, so I will override this one. Yes. We're just gonna continue going. Ah, oh, no, no, no.
I'm better on the other way. Okay, I'll, I'll take that L. Oh, jeez. Okay. They're just so tough. Ah, oh, Super Saiyan, let's go. There we go. Alright. Ah, jeez. Don't touch me. No! Okay, that was a pretty good one. I'm like sweating here. Ah, load, load. Okay. Ah, oh, fuck me. Oh, that still hurts me? Look at me. Ah, oh, nah, all right. He got me again. Oh, no, uh, I think I have like one more move in me. Oh my God, okay. I hate this game. Just put me down. Thank you. I just wish there was more continues than what they allow. You got this? Thank you. I, I kind of don't want to cheat, though. Oh, I, I had him. The thing is, I'm not good at this side. I feel like I've been lucky so far. Nah, I got it. Nope. Once I said that, ah, oh, he put me in my place. Oh, wow, he grabbed me. Jeez. I can't believe how sweaty we're getting. Oh, see, look. Wait. <gasps> what? Oh, let's go. Boink, boink, boink. Come towards me, bro. Boink, boink, boink. Oh, he's scared now. Look at him. Look at him. He's like, oh, shit. I don't know where to go. I want to attack her, but I don't think I can. Oh God, oh God, come up. Just don't know where his hitbox is. Maybe I could go down? Let me go the other way back. Oh, I messed up. Jeez.
There we go. Okay, so I need to have at least half ring momentum. I guess it is wrestling. That makes sense. Oh, he grabbed me! Oh my god. Heat. <laughs> nah, this is not fair. Okay, I'll give it like five more minutes. Uh, let me try it one more time. One more time. I'll take a quick break. Need to
Thank you for the for the lurk. Over for left side. Oh, drinking. I mean, if you want to drink, you should. So hopefully this time around I could do this fucking game cuz I don't know I'm getting annoyed. I your your boy's getting annoyed by this fucking game. Oh, that looks good. Maybe because I'm a fat fuck. Anywho. Yeah, I'm here. I don't even care about the story now. This is more like the principle of me passing this game, you know? Ah, oh, jeez. Alright. What the hell? No, don't touch me, bro. No, don't touch me. We're, we're cheating now. I got my hacks on. There you go. Ah, oh, jeez. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. You, you didn't grab me. There we go. The only reason why I'm cheating is because I'm frustrated with the game. Okay. Oh jeez, don't touch me. Ah oh, jeez, alright. I, I could fight him for the remainder of this. Oh. There we go. Oh God, what is this story? How could we lose? Look at us, we're huge. Gore, quit your whining. I'm sure I go, it's finished. What did you mean? Oh my God, there's more? Culture Strikes, you should be able to smash Largo. Good luck. Oh, fuck that. I thought this is it. Give me a continue or something. Wait, what? Queen of Cups Bridge. Oh, this is it. Yeah, fuck that. I've decided that Ligo is a fool, okay? Let me help you. I, you won't regret it. Oh. You are a liar and a Chad. I will never trust a scoundrel like you. Impressive, you most impressive. No matter, you will pay. Oh. Okay, I am over this game. Fuck this game. Like, I don't care what happens to these people. I have no continues. This guy is tough as fuck. Dervish. Nope. 
I am done. Done with this dumb game. I hate it. Oh god, what's... I'm raging. No, I, I don't even want to hear the music. Alright. We're, we're putting this in the... In the rage list. <laughs> why? The only reason why I'm quitting this is because... It doesn't offer continuation continuation system. Like, I literally have to start from the beginning. Let's see, look. I have to start right from level one. See? Literally, level one. And I thought it was the final boss too, so. I, I really don't care about anything that happens to these people. I don't care if their town goes to crap or what. The peace was not kept. And I'm okay with that, alright? I am totally okay with that. Because, you know, maybe they should have given me more continues. But I'm going to put this in my little list of games that I've quit. If you go over to my actual Twitch channel, not when it's live, you can see the list of all the games that I have rage quit. This is one of them. And I am literally doing right now live. I think it's in the about page. Yep, about. Edit. It's okay, like you said. This game blows. Yeah, fuck this game. The Peacekeepers. Okay. But I got an hour left. Or 40 minutes. I don't know if it's... Let me see what he's doing. I'm okay with playing Fortnite for the rest of it. I don't want to start a new game tonight. Let me ask him. I'm gonna get into fighting games. Oh no, I've, I rage quit fighting games. People love watching me play it, but um, but yeah. Alright. I'm gonna do Fortnite with, um... I don't know if I should end stream. You know what? Let's end stream. We'll go over to Monks. And it'll, it'll be a continuation. How about that? I think that sounds perfect. Here, here's the thing with fighting games. Like, they're just so sweaty. They so are. And I do have in my list uh, games that... I am trying to beat and like I think let me look at the list let me look at my list I want to sweat if you do want to sweat the next game you should get if you want to get fighting games it's Street Fighter 6 if you really want to be sweaty Oh, Comic Zone is the ne no two hours. I think tomorrow I I don't want to play another brawler or another beat 'em up. So tomorrow I'm gonna do King of Fighters, and and we'll see how that goes. Oh God, I'm gonna rage quit King of Fighters. Bad things about, yeah, but the new one looks good. Smash Bros, Smash Bros, easy to get into, very difficult to master. I don't know anything about um, the Skull Girls. I just know it looks cute. Oh, looks like he started stream. I'm gonna be first in chat. Gonna be playing some Fortnite with the homie. King of Fighters, uh, 97. That's what I'll be playing tomorrow. God help me. 
But anyways, we're gonna go over to my boy Monk since I'll be playing over there with him. We're gonna be playing some Fortnite. And yeah, I hope everyone has a great day. But before I go, I do want to remind each and every one of you that you are all worth it. You are all marvelous. I am so glad that I stream and you guys interact with me, talk with me, even the lurkers. I love you all. Thank you for all my mods. Thank you for the latest followers and thank you for the raids. And also, let's remember to look after each other. And don't forget that everything will going to be all right. And for the raid message, if you have it, let's going to go this, give them this. Will you... If you have the Corgi emotes, please give them this. If you don't have the Corgi emotes... Give them this, okay? Now let's go raid him. Raid at Muckor. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Huh? Wait, what? What the heck?